10 Biggest and Most Hilarious Rip-Off Games on Steam Simulator Games Okay, there are far too many terrible simulator games for us to choose just a select few as it would pretty much take up the entire list. This trend of simulator games started thanks to the growing popularity of games like Euro Truck Simulator and Farming Simulator. Because of this, we've seen the likes of Goat Simulator and Surgeon Simulator 2013 get released as parodies of the whole craze. This is fine as both games function like they're meant to, especially Goat Simulator with its insane physics. Because of both the actual simulation games and the well-done parody games, we saw the rise of many developers trying to cash in on the whole fad, both with serious simulation games and bad parodies. Parodies like Rock Simulator, Woodcutter Simulator, and even frickin' Robot Vacuum Simulator. But that's not all. You also have games that try to compete with the serious line of simulator games like Train Simulator, Cities XXL, and the absolutely dreadful Airport Simulator series of games. It's a trend that just isn't willing to die out. Ride to Hell Retribution now, this is one where we kind of feel bad for the developers of the game as they were tasked with creating something that would rival Grand Theft Auto, only for the game to be cancelled and then resurrected again as a hot pile of garbage. Is this game horrible? Well, from a technical standpoint, of course it frickin' is. However, this game is the pure embodiment of old B-movies from the 1970s and 80s. This game has a dumb storyline that's paired with some of the funniest voice acting you'll hear in any game ever, aside from maybe the original Resident Evil. And the gameplay, although broken, is just so ridiculously stupid that you just can't help but laugh at it. That being said, this clearly isn't worth paying full price for. Hell, it's not even worth a measly five bucks. Maybe try and find it on console in one of those three for two deals. Air Control So technically, this should be a part of the simulator games section of this list, but this one is just so bad that it deserves a spot of its own. This game is pretty much an insult to the whole trend of simulator games. Every asset has been basically stolen from other games as they all differ in style and quality from one another. The presentation of the game is pretty abysmal to say the least, as the area the game takes place in is either untextured or just simply doesn't make any sense whatsoever. This game was clearly just trying to cash in on the whole Goat Simulator craze. The only difference is that Goat Simulator was just wild and crazy, allowing the player to roam around an open city causing chaos, whereas this game confines you to one area as it desperately tries to impress the player with its weird off-color humor, if you can even call it that. Oh, and the game is prone to crashing. That doesn't exactly help its cause. Infestation The Survivor Series Originally known as the War Z before the copyright holders of the similarly titled World War Z book and film decided to slap them with a nice hefty cease and desist order. Infestation The Survivor Series is yet another game that tries to ride on the coattails of another successful game trend that was sweeping the market at the time. Thanks to the success of what was originally a mod for Arma 2, that is, as of the producing of this video, still in early alpha, DayZ, Hammerpoint Interactive decided to create a clone of DayZ. Needless to say, this game was just downright awful. But what else would you expect from a company whose owner was originally responsible for the release of one of the worst games of all time, Big Rigs Over the Road Racing? This game was panned for its terrible gameplay and horrible companion and enemy AI. And the company who made this game was criticized for the way it dealt with criticism, as their community team ended up harassing players who weren't satisfied with their experience. Needless to say, Steam pulled the game for their actions against the community. Bad Rats Bad Rats is somewhat of a harmless title. This game clearly didn't care. I mean, just look at it. Presentation-wise, it looks like something ripped straight from the PlayStation 1 back in 1995. Not to mention, it's a budget indie title. So why is it on this list? Because even though this game is a budget puzzle game with horrible presentation, it relies on physics-based gameplay, meaning that gravity is a factor as you try to build a structure in order to get a bomb to kill a cat. Well, it would be if the physics actually worked like they're supposed to, but yeah, it's harmless, but it just plain sucks. The Slaughtergrounds and anything by Digital Homicide 
Remember how we said that Air Control stole random assets and used it for their abysmal excuse for a game? Well, at least they only released one game. Digital Homicide, on the other hand, released the same game over and over again by reskinning their game with stolen assets. Their most popular game is, without a doubt, Slaughtering Grounds. This game is hands down the most hilarious excuse for a video game on Steam. Not only is the game a complete eyesore, I mean, come on, look at the terribly cropped blood on the screen there, but the game is one of the laziest and buggiest first-person shooters ever created. We aren't even exaggerating about that. This game, along with the other garbage released by Digital Homicide, was heavily criticized by fans and reviewers. In response to this, Digital Homicide handed out lawsuits left, right, and center to those who dared to even speak negatively about their content. Once word got out to a representative of Steam, Steam decided to cut ties with Digital Homicide, leading to the company's eventual closure. Day 1 – Gary's Incident Hey, remember that game that almost shut down Total Biscuit's channel after he created an honest review of it? Well, it wouldn't be a list of hilarious rip-offs without it. Day 1 – Gary's Incident is by far one of the most infamous examples of how bad Steam games can truly get. This game clearly relied on pre-made assets, as models used in this game look like low-end Gary's Mod models from 2004. There's no excuse for that in 2013. The gameplay was just plain horrible, as enemy AI were either too dumb to notice when you were standing right next to them, or they were a bit too smart as they'd attack a player almost instantly while the player had their back turned. It's an absolute mess. Star Forge So you'd probably expect No Man's Sky to be somewhere on this list. Well, here's the problem. With all of No Man's Sky's problems, as well as all the false promises that were made during the lead-up to the game's release, at least No Man's Sky got a full release. Star Forge, however, is one of those types of early access games that lulls the player into thinking it's a worthy investment to purchase an early version of the game in the hopes that, by the time the final release comes out, it will be as good as they hoped it would be. Well, after purchasing the game, they're greeted by glitches galore. Not to mention the game made so many promises that weren't fulfilled in the early access version that the game was essentially dead on arrival. Now, you could argue again that bugs are expected with early access, and you'd be correct. However, the game still needs to be playable in early access, and that clearly wasn't the case here. Flat Out 3 Rated the absolute worst of the worst on Steam, Flat Out 3 – Chaos and Destruction was released in 2011 to nothing but negative reviews. It's really weird to think that, because the first two games in the series were pretty decent, receiving average scores of 7 out of 10 and 6 out of 10 respectively by Edge Magazine. Yeah, we know Edge is a fairly biased company, but regardless. So, with a decent history, how could the third game possibly go wrong? If anything, a game should be at its peak by the third one in the series. Well, this game does not follow the previous two games well, as the game not only performs terribly, seriously, come on, racing games should at the very least be 60 FPS, especially in the 2010s. But the game looks like something from the early 2000s, has horrible car physics, and is just downright annoying. Personally speaking, though, the game is far from the worst on Steam, as there is more garbage. But man, is this an awful game. Raven's City Now, at first glance, this game doesn't look terrible. Sure, graphically, it's not up to scratch with some of the more high-end games on the market, but as a little budget game, it doesn't look bad. Aesthetically and asset-wise, the game looked okay. It's the gameplay where the entire game falls apart. The game just felt incomplete, as massive parts of the game were either missing or just unplayable. Bundle that together with horrible AI, an incredibly boring story, and terrible, yet hilarious, voice acting, this game is set to be a surefire failure. It doesn't stop there. The game was removed by Steam, yet was re-released under the title Vendetta – Curse of Raven's Cry. This version of the game features minuscule changes, such as gameplay and enemy AI improvements, better voice acting – which isn't an improvement. Like, seriously, guys, leave the cheesy voice acting in. More weapons, more missions, and more upgrades. Needless to say, though, this release was just as much of a failure as the initial release was.